Hello guys, uh, welcome to Aspen Plus tutorial video. Um, so for this week video, I decided to create a simulation related to heat pump assisted distillation um, for C3 separation. C3 separation here means a binary mixture or two component mixture containing propylene and propane. Uh, to separate propylene and propane or to simulate the separation of propylene and propane in, in Aspen Plus, uh, we usually we use red flag, uh, which is also true in this particular simulation. But uh, for this particular, but in this video, I decided to put more emphasis on the boiler wizard feature or boiler wizard a function of the red flag block itself. I'm not going to explain in detail right now in this slide, but later uh, uh, when we do our simulation, uh, uh, I will show you uh, what kind of information that you need to input, uh, what are the requirements, what are the results that you can get, and then where should you uh, should you look uh, uh, in the red flag block to get boiler to go to the boiler music function. So without further ado, let's get to it. So um, before we begin our simulation, I think um, it would be a good idea for us to get some background information related to the C3 separation as well as propylene and propane component self. And for your information, uh, propylene are among the most produced chemical in the industry. And as you can see from the images on your bottom right here, uh, you can see that uh, propylene uh, is the top five uh, chemical most produced chemicals in the in the in the world or in the industry with the annual production rate of fourteen point four million metric ton per year. I know this data was published back in two thousand and two, and right now we are in the year of twenty twenty two. So this data was about twenty was exactly twenty years old. Uh, the reason why I decided not to look for uh, a more updated information is because it's simply because I'm too lazy to find one. But if you manage to find a more updated information, I am not surprised that the rank would be more or less similar. Perhaps maybe for the more updated information, I maybe uh, propylene would be the top four most produced chemical uh, in the world, maybe. But they are still uh, uh, they are still uh, the second. Uh, but they, they, they will be the, it will be the second behind uh, ethylene. Um, the rank will not be changed. Uh, I think, or oh, they are more or less the same, but the annual production rate will change definitely uh, uh, over the years. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, back in 2018, the annual production rate of uh, propylene was around 18.7 uh, million metric ton per year. So you can see that uh, the the what. Well, uh, uh, over the course of the years, you can see that the rank will not change that much, but the annual production rate will change. Now, uh, moving on, um, when it comes to the production of uh, propylene, uh, usually propylene will be produced uh, using uh, through uh, catalytic cracking process or steam cracking process, uh, to which uh, will produce not only propane but also uh, uh, hide some hydrogen as well as a uh, propane. Now there are also uh, different, uh, I would say, technologies or different processes that can be used to produce uh, uh, to produce a uh, propylene. For example, here uh, we have PDH. Uh, PDH here is considered as the on-demand. Uh, uh, propylene production technologies. PDH here means a uh, propylene dehydrogenation a uh, process. So uh, from the name itself, you can you can you can see that the pro, uh, the, the propane will be dehydrogenated. Okay, basically uh, two uh, 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 hydrogen uh, hydrogen atom will be you know split uh, I guess split off from the propane to produce uh, propylene and hydrogen. So the mixture or output of the reactor from the PDH will be a propylene, a propane as well as hydrogen. And uh, okay, let, let, let's just focus on uh, propylene and propane. So for these two particular mixture, uh, uh, they are usually separated in the C3 splitter or uh, it, it is just a fancy name of saying that uh, uh, distillation column uh, to separate propane and propane. 
But you have to understand that to separate propane and propane are, high, are, are quite difficult because of their similar physical chemical properties. And as you can see from the table, uh, here we have a boiling point of propane around four, minus 47.6 and the boiling point of propane uh, is around minus 42 degrees Celsius. So it is a, it is a close boiling point uh, component. So, which is the reason why they are quite difficult to be separated. And uh, in the industry, uh, the two, uh, they, they are separated uh, either using high pressure distillation. So when you use high pressure distillation, okay, you can raise the, uh, the, uh, the, the condensation, uh, the, the, what is it called? Uh, you can raise the uh, boiling point temperature to perhaps uh, at room temperature so that you can use cooling water as your uh, cooling utility to condense the propylene or you can use a relatively low pressure distillation, but under cryogenic uh, condition. Cryogenic here means a low temperature condition. And when people are producing, when people are separating propylene and from propane, uh, of course, they're gonna, uh, 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 among, the, uh, um, among the specification that, uh, that they would like to, uh, to get, okay, would be uh, their grade or purity. Uh, for propylene, you can have a polymer grade propylene around 99.5 weight percent. And by the name, you can you, you know that they will be used to create a polymer. For example, polypropylene, which are often used to uh, make your container, plastic container, plastic bottles, as well as your textile. Normally, your textile, uh, your, like, like your carpet or your rug, are made out of this uh, polypropylene fiber. And then uh, if we go to a slightly lower, uh, lower purity here, we have a chemical grade uh, propylene around 95 weight percent of propylene. And then the remainder would be uh, propane uh, around 5%, uh, 5%. And this, uh, this, uh, this uh, chemical grade propylene will be used in, you know, in most of the chemical, uh, petrochemical uh, uh, plant uh, to produce IPA, isopropyl alcohol, PEO here, PEO here is a polyethylene oxide, I think, PEO, uh, and then acrylodetrial, and then ocumin. And there are a lot more. Uh, so what, what I'm trying to say here is uh, chemical grade problems uh, are often used as a precursor or as a, as a raw material to create a variety of solvent or intermediates. And then lastly, we have a refinery grade uh, propylene, uh, around 50 to 70 weight percent, uh, used often for uh, fuel or uh, to, to, to generate heat. Okay, moving on. So as I have mentioned before, um, separating propylene and propane is not easy. Okay, they are among the most capital and energy intensive processes. Uh, Citrus splitter usually op operates using 200 trays and or, or more, okay, and operates under high reflux ratio around 12 to 15. So this, uh, of course, uh, requires a lot of uh, energy at the reboiler to reboil the, uh, a lot of the returning uh, fluid, uh, returning a liquid at the top section of your uh, column. Now, uh, because we have 200 trays, okay, when you go to the uh, petrochemical plant, okay, if you see uh, one of the highest structures, uh, okay, in the plant, or one of the highest towers or columns or structures or whatever, uh, most likely that it can be a propylene uh, a distillation column or C3 splitter, or it could, it could be a C2 splitter as well. Uh, given the fact that they have, uh, they require a lot of energy, okay, they are energy intensive processes, uh, okay, researchers nowadays have tried a various system uh, or uh, to in order to improve the process uh, process efficiencies as well as their energy uh, uh, to or reduce their energy requirement. For example, here uh, uh, among the uh, among the approaches that people have developed would be uh, to incorporate membrane system. Uh, in this case, they are using a membrane distillation hybrid system, where you put a membrane first to do the bulk separation and then the permeate of the membrane will enter the distillation column but the distillation column would do like a polishing okay a polishing of the of the propylene only and Bernali 
Bernali et al. published his work in 2010 and 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 uh, and they found that okay this kind of hybrid system uh, enable uh, them to uh, save around 36 percent uh, energy and the second one would be to use internally heat integrated distillation collar meaning that you just try to recover you know as much heat or, or uh, uh, as much heat and then try to recover try to use less i would say coal utility as well as heat utility and my et al say that uh okay this kind of process uh able to save around 25 uh, percent of energy and then lastly is a heat assisted uh heat pump assisted distillation which we will focus and uh ma et al in 2008 18, uh, he, he published uh, his work in science and he found out that heat pump assisted distillation uh, in his simulation are uh, able to obtain 75% energy saving. And these are a few, these are uh, just two examples of the work on the simulation related to heat pump assisted distillation uh, uh, to, for, uh, for the separation of propane and propane publish uh, i don't know uh, there's no there's no there's no name here there's no date here but uh, these are the title you can just go ahead and then look uh, on the internet so um for this week's simulation um the work that i will be referring to is uh, the work published in 2017 uh, by, uh, by christopher et al uh, in industrial and engineering chemistry research um uh, you can just uh, go ahead and then download the paper if you want to uh, uh, to know in details what exactly are uh, they they doing, but but in summary what what they are trying to do is uh, they are trying to compare five uh, different uh, configuration okay distillation configuration uh, um, uh, that would uh, that would uh, in terms of their energy saving okay. Um, of course, they, they are also incorporating MATLAB, if I'm not mistaken, and, and a lot of uh, fantasy stuff. But in our simple simulation, we're just going to consider two cases. Okay, the first one here is the conventional distillation uh, uh, column uh, for C3 separation, where you have a feed here going into a distillate, uh, into a column, and then on the distillate section, uh, on the distillate section, you have a Cooling water is a cold utility, and you have a reboiler as a hot utility, and then you can, and then with a certain uh, reflux ratio, and then feed coming in at a certain uh, stage, uh, you can get the 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 propylene and propane okay purity that you want. That's the first uh, configuration. The second configuration here is called uh, distillation with mechanical vapor recompression, where in this case. We still have the same uh, feed entering the column at some stages, okay? And the column will be operating at some uh, reflux ratio. But in this case, um, the distillate section, okay, leaving the top of the column is in the vapor phase. Now, this uh, this uh, this propylene vapor, okay, will uh, will be compressed to a higher pressure, and because of the compression, we know that the temperature will be a lot higher compared to uh, the incoming one. So this uh, hot stream will be used as a hot utility to reboil the bottom section of the, of the column. Uh, bottom section, uh, the reboiler section of the column. And they will leave. Now, when, when heat exchange uh, happens, uh, of course, uh, some of this uh, propylene stream will be condensed. So you have a two uh, maybe two-phase mixture here, and this two-phase mixture here will be uh, will be will uh, we will reduce the temperature uh, using a valve. So when we reduce the temperature of, uh, using a valve, uh, the Joule-Thomson effect will take place. So because we throttle the gas, so the temperature will do, will will go down as well. So when the temperature go down as well, uh, as well, and there will be more. Uh, there will be more uh, propylene being condensed, but probably not enough to fully condense the entire stream. So in this case, we have a, a vapor liquid separator where the liquid uh, propylene will uh, live at the bottom of the vessel, while the vapor, the, the remainder of the vapor phase will 
be condensed in the uh, condenser using a similar cooling water. But in this case, the the uh, the, the only difference between uh, uh, in terms of like condenser for configuration B and configuration A is that configuration B probably will use uh, uh, a lot less amount of cooling water because probably maybe like 80% of the 80% uh, of the uh, propylene have already been condensed but in this case uh, you have to condense a lot of you know propylene stream because uh, prior because number one uh, you have a reflux and then number two uh, uh, and reflux and number two you also have a, a propylene uh, going out but in this case uh, yeah, they are also the same, but majority of the propylene would be condensed already, and then uh, they would be mixed. So whatever strip going here will be in liquid phase. Now this splitter with the sums with uh, with uh, certain with some with a specific split fraction value uh, will be used to simulate to simulate reflux. So so. Uh, reflux is basically the, the amount of uh, liquid being recycled back into the column, right? So some amount of it, and in fact, major, uh, most of it, okay, depending on the reflux ratio, will be recycled back and the remainder leave as a propylene product. And the uh, propylene will uh, exit at the bottom of the distillation column. So as you can see here, the difference between configuration A and configuration B is that this is, a, this is just a conventional one where you have a hot uh, a, a coal utility as well as hot utility. And in this case, we don't have a, 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 a coal utility here, but it, we have a hot a coal utility here. But we have a compressor. So a compressor requires energy, electricity. So there's going to be another utility. And we, also, we don't have, but we don't have the hot utility for the boiler because this hot utility are provided uh, by through heat exchange between the propylene stream and the uh, uh, reboiler stream. Okay, uh, before I move on to my next slide, uh, one important thing that I want to highlight here is uh, even though configuration B able to uh, save seven, up to 75% of energy, uh, according to Ma et al, back in 2018, uh, he mentioned that uh, this design, this design are not uh, routinely uh, employed due to operational as well as control challenges. Okay, uh, moving on to our next slides. Um, let's see. Okay. Uh, before we move on to our simulation, I think it would be a good idea for us to know, okay, what is our design problem. So in our design problem, uh, we would like to simulate a C3 splitter with configuration A as well as configuration B with a yearly propylene production of around 450,000 ton per year. So this is, this is our distillate rate, uh, 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 by the way. Um, the distillate should produce polymer grade propylene. So these are the purity requirement, 99.58% with 99% recovery. So, uh, so what, what does it mean here is that 99% uh, of the propylene from the feed are recovered at the top of the distillation column. And then the bottom product should contain uh, a propane, but having a, a purity or having a grade of HD5. HD5 grade propane uh, is basically pro, uh, 95 weight percent, pro, uh, weight percent propane. And then we're going to compare energy requirement at the condenser section, reboiler section, as well as compressor uh, section uh, for configuration A as well as configuration B. Uh, these are all of the required information. Uh, majority of this information I extract from the papers by Christopher et al. Uh, back in 2017. So you can, uh, you can just download the paper and then read further if you want. Uh, the property method, uh, I will use SRK. So I already did, I, Actually, I already did the, I already back calculate uh, the amount of feed required to, uh, to get 99% uh, uh, recovery. So the feed, uh, propylene and propane feed will be around 534,000 uh, ton per year. 
mole fraction of the field is 85% uh, uh, propylene and 15% of propylene. Stages 240, as I mentioned, uh, uh, C3, C3 p having uh, more than 200 stages are quite common. Uh, feed stages, uh, it enters at uh, stage 176. Reflux ratio is 9.1. Uh, Dislate rate, uh, 450,000. Condenser pressure is 18 and stage pressure drop is around 0 0.007 uh, bar per stage. So since I have around 240 stage, so the total pressure drop is around 1.68 uh, bar pressure. Okay, moving on to the second configuration. Now the second configuration is slightly, slightly complex, I guess, but the feet are still the same. The column stages, feet stages are also the same, but the uh, but in here I have a boiled up ratio is around four uh, fifty eight point one nine. I will explain to you where I get uh, the boiled up ratio, but basically I I begin with the configuration uh, one configuration A, and then I will get uh, I get the boiled up ratio from configuration A to be put into configuration B. Uh, in this case, we have a compressor here uh, with pressure ratio of 2.15 and then we have a reboiler here. We have a valve here, uh, reducing the pressure to 18 bar and then we have a, uh, what is it called here? Uh, we have a, a vapor liquid separator with uh, no pressure drop and no heat duty. Uh, Cooling water here is used to condense the remainder of the liquid, the remainder of the vapor. So uh, my specification was no pressure drop and vapor fraction is equal to zero, meaning that all of them are in the liquid phase. And then they are mixed. So we have a mixer here and then they will, uh, they will go here. And then we have a splitter here to simulate the reflux. Now, in case you're wondering, wh where do I get 0 0.9009 speed fraction? So if you remember from the configuration one, uh, my reflux ratio is 9.1. So reflux ratio is L over D. So L here is re liquid return. D here is distillate. So if reflux ratio is 9.1, so L here is 9.1 divided by 1. So speed fraction is just 9.1 divided by 9.1 plus 1. So you will get 0. 9009. I think that's pretty much it in terms of like a design, uh, in terms of like uh, input specification. Okay, let's move on to the next slide. Okay, these are all the information uh, required uh, that we need to obtain from our simulation. So we have a stream result here. It should satisfy the requirement of HD5 grade propane. Uh, it should also satisfy the requirement of propylene purity 99.6 or 5 or it doesn't really matter I guess 0 0.5, 0 0.6 is more or less the same and then propylene recovery 99% and the production rate is 450,000 ton per year and then we will also compare the thermal or energy result because we are trying to compare between configuration A and configuration B which one is more efficient Okay, that's, that will be all for the uh, design problem. So let's move on to our uh, simulation. Okay, guys, uh, these are my Aspen Plus uh, simulator. Um, as I have mentioned uh, in my previous slide, uh, we are dealing with the binary mixture of propylene and propane. So what you need to do is just uh, insert these two components, which is propylene and propane in your uh, component specification. And then I'm just gonna hit next. Uh, we will be using SRK, uh, SRK property method. So when you use SRK, uh, we use we need to change the uh, free water method into the steam NBS. I don't know why, but it is what it is, I guess. And I hit next. And then I go to the simulation environment. Okay, to simulate the first uh, configuration is quite simple. Just go to column, uh, click your red flag column, and then click here. Uh, I will name this as a uh, column column A to represent uh, configuration A. And then I will have my distillate, liquid distillate, because uh, propylene exit uh, at the distillate in the liquid phase. So here I will I, I will put uh, maybe C3H6 uh, configuration A. 
and then C3 H8 uh, propane configuration A. And here I have a uh, feed, a uh, feed, a uh, feed two, I guess. Uh, I will explain why I choose feed two. And then um, I will choose, I will, uh, I will add a duplicator just to dip to duplicate the stream because I'm kind of lazy to uh, do one more stream, I guess, of feed for the configuration B. So I put duplicator here. Uh, just write down the UPL duplicate. And then I have my feed. Uh, let's say here, maybe feed. And then I have feed two. Let's say I put here. And then I have another feed. Uh, these are for uh, configuration two. Let's say I put right down feed number three. Okay. Later we will deal with the uh, configuration two, but at this moment let's begin with the configuration A. Uh, begin with the with uh, specifying our feed. Uh, the temperature here is okay. The the author of the paper does not really specify temperature. Actually, he did, but he did also mention about uh, the the feed. Uh, having a vapor fraction of 0 0.03. So I'm going to use a vapor fraction, 0 0.03. Uh, pressure is 21 bar, if I'm mistaken. Uh, yep. Uh, the total flow is around 5, uh, let's see, uh, 534759 uh, ton per year. And then here we have a mass fraction. No, uh, I'm sorry, mole fraction. Propylene is 85%. And then propylene is 0.15%. Uh, uh, okay, you can hit next. Uh, it will redirect you to this column A. Uh, stages to 40. Condenser, we have a total condenser. Uh, the rest just give us default. Distillate rate, uh, we're going to use mass and then we will have 450,000 uh, ton per year. Uh, reflect ratio by mass, uh, 9.1. And then uh, we go to the next step, uh, stream. Uh, our feed enters at stage 176. Uh, go to pressure tab, condenser is running at 18 bar pressure, stage number 2 because we have 0 0.007 bar uh, pressure drop per stage. So the second one is around 18.007 and then pressure drop for the rest of the column, uh, I will just mention 0 0.007 per stage, uh, stage pressure drop here. And then I hit next. And then I run the simulation. Okay, I'm not gonna go discuss the result, but the only thing that I want to check is the the, the purity requirement, whether it ma it match or not. If not, uh, we need to slightly modify, I guess. But I I actually have have uh, have optimized the condition, but uh, but we'll see. Uh, Properly, uh, mass fraction should be ninety nine point six. So we are, uh, we got the target. We, we got our target. So that's good. And then if you want to uh, look uh, at the, uh, um, at the what, what is it? If you want to have a look at the uh, heat duty requirement at the condenser, of uh, you can just it's around one hundred fifty three, and then. And then you also have the heat duty here, uh, gigajoule per hour, 151. Why is it so less than I would expect? Uh, I'm not so sure why, but but I, I think that's that's fine. That's fine. Okay, next. Uh, oh, before I forgot, I just I need to get one information here, which is the uh, reboiler. Uh, duty actually, uh, no, I'm sorry, boiled up ratio, which is 58.19. This is the, the information that I want to use for my second column. Okay, before I, I talk about the second column, um, I, just, I just want to highlight here 
Okay, uh, as you can see here, we have a red flag uh, having just one inlet and then two outlet. I just don't, and then these are the final products. So I just don't see, uh, if you don't know, uh, if you don't know, uh, uh, um, if you see here, there's no way for us to kind of do some kind of like energy integration and things like that. So, uh, we, so where maybe you want to use heat here, okay? Heat here to uh, reboil, uh, to, to use to reboil your, your stream and, and things like that. But you, using the normal, uh, if you don't activate the, uh, I would say reboiler wizard, you uh, you will not able to do that. But right now, uh, for the second configuration, okay, what I, you know what, uh, as opposed of me explaining, but uh, I think me doing stuff would be, uh, uh, would provide a better, uh, say, idea for you. So for the second column, just choose a red flag as well. So column uh, B, uh, connect uh, destination. And then um, I put here because my, if you remember my screen, my product screen is, uh, my, my uh, problem screen is in vapor phase. So I put it here first. So C3H6 uh, configuration B. And then here C3H8 configuration B. Now, if you look here, there's no way I can do any heat integration because these are already it's already product, right? But don't worry, uh, boiler wizard will allow you to do some kind of like modification, I guess, to the to the to the to if you want to do some kind of like if you want to complete the heat assisted uh, pump distillation. So before that, just just complete this uh, the, the the information first. Two hundred and forty condenser. Um, we're not gonna use the condenser of the column, so none. We boiler, I just keep it as it is, but here, uh, I would choose a boiled up ratio by mass, which is 50, uh, 50, 58.19. Okay. Okay, stream, uh, I have a feed stream at 176. Um, and then I have a Condenser pressure, 18, uh, just the same information. Just to, just to uh, complete the, just to complete the requirement. Uh, okay, what, I'm, uh, what I want to say just now, okay, uh, if you use this uh, particular red flag, right? Um, um if you use the normal option you cannot just you cannot do you cannot have the external kind of like reboiler or external condenser so boiler wizard would allow you to have external reboiler and external condenser so to do that uh, before we do our uh, our boiler wizard the first thing that we need to do is to create our own uh reboiler so our my reboiler here would be heat exchanger so I just type here heat. And then because once you reboil, the vapor phase will be uh will be will travel uh to to the column. So you need a vapor a, a, a vessel that try that that can separate uh vapor from a liquid. So I choose another. Uh, I choose a flash two block vapor liquid separator. So here I just put a set one and that's it okay to activate uh, where do you want to uh, add or where do you want to find your reboiler wizard is quite simple so just double click here uh, under reboiler here you have a reboiler wizard so click the reboiler wizard okay they will create a pseudo stream pseudo stream here is kind of like a, a fake stream but having a similar composition of the bottom product. Uh, later you will see, and it will go to the heat exchanger. So uh, you need to specify your heat exchanger. So if you remember, I have specified my heat exchanger. So I choose heat, my heat exchanger, heat, uh, which I name as heat. And then you can also, uh, you can also have the, 
you, you can also design your reboiler using a uh, heat x uh, no uh, exchange design rating but i'm just going to use a shortcut design at this moment and then flash i will choose a uh, flash separator number one and then you hit okay and then if you go to the main flow sheet you can see that these are the pseudo stream of the bottom product okay they go to the heat exchangers and then leave at the heat exchangers and then uh and then the, uh aspen has their own internal calculation to do this so you don't have to worry about any of this but uh what you need to worry is your uh what is it called your um your your propylene stream at the district section and if you remember your our propylene stream will be compressed so i choose a pressure changer compressor here so I'll just type c o p r uh, connect uh, destination oh, it's a bit it's a bit messy so just okay now um here will be um reconnect source so this will be your hot utility by the way now i'm going to delete this uh, it's okay you can delete this actually you can also delete this if you want so it doesn't really matter let's say so these are the hot screen okay uh maybe i don't know s S7. Uh, I just put a random name here, so don't worry about it. And then uh, I would need to have a, a valve, if you remember. I put valve here, maybe uh, I'll make it bigger, I guess. Okay. So the hot stream, okay, leaving the heat exchanger will, join, will enter valve so here s8 and then here this valve uh, uh s9 okay this valve then will join will enter the uh, another vapor liquid separator okay uh, so i just write down set two and then mission and then uh, the uh, property that are still in the vapor phase will be condensed so here i have s10 and then the liquid phase will be uh, living at the bottom of the uh, separator so s11 and then since uh, we because we want to condense the uh, propylene vapor so we need to have our cooler uh, so maybe con condenser and then we have we need to have a mixer as well uh, basically uh, what this stream will be condensed and mixed here as well as and uh, to to join the 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 liquid the the propylene that are already in the liquid phase and then we have exit here as as the uh, as the team i have s12 here s12 uh, okay destination and then uh, let me zoom out a bit i know it's quite uh it's quite messy but trust me these are these are quite simple i guess So this stream, okay, are uh, your propylene, propylene uh, in the liquid phase. But we need to make sure that we have a reflux. In this case, I have a splitter here, uh, S P L I T. So this stream, uh, let's let me rotate. Okay, this component transmission. Okay, this will be my uh, propylene fit C three H uh, six. The actual one, by the way, uh, uh, B dash B B one, for example. Uh, this uh, this uh, I will rename this as distillate. 
fingers together. So these are my propylene C3, H6B. And then we have a reflux going into the column. Um, what should I name? Uh, I, I just gonna name recycle. Actually, it's not recycle, it's reflux, but never mind. You know what? I'm gonna rename uh, reflux. Uh, let me do some cleanup of the uh, let me do some cleanup of the uh, PFD uh, process flow diagram. Okay, I think that's good. Uh, we already specify our column. Next, I will, we specify our compressor. They have a pressure ratio of uh, 2.15. Uh, isotropic, okay, moving on. Uh, these two are already uh, Aspen, uh, because we select the boiler wizard, we don't have to do anything because it's already been kind of like pre-specified by, by them. Uh, if you don't believe me, just click this. It's already been pre-specified by Aspen. Uh, and then they also have to specify this. Okay. And they are also have they also have this, uh, their, their, uh, if you go to the flow sheeting option, if you use a boiler wizard, they have their calculator block actually. To calculate what are the heat, uh, uh, the, their internal calculation in a sense uh, for for when you activate the reboiler reason. Uh, you just need to complete the, uh, the the others. So here valve here, uh, outlet pressure eighteen bar. Oh, here before I forgot, uh, because I have a stream incoming, so the reflux will join, will uh, enter at, at stage number one, the top stages. Uh, maybe I will designate it as a liquid phase. And then uh, this one, I just put uh, a no pressure drop and then no heat duty. Okay, here I will uh, specify a vapor fraction uh, equal to zero and no pressure drop. And uh, mixer, no need to do anything. Your splitter, by the way, you have to make sure that a 0 0.9009 of the incoming stream, okay, will be returned back to the column. This is what I specify, by the way. And I think I have complete all of it. So let's click and run the simulation. Okay, I got the result. So that's good. Uh, before I do anything, uh, uh, I just want to check one only one thing. The first one is the propylene of configuration B as well as propylene of configuration of B. Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, mass fraction 99.59, so 99.6, 96%. Okay, this is high uh, HD5 uh, grade propane, so I'm good. And then you can just check uh, the energy requirement of the compressor. Uh, we don't have a energy required. Uh, 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 energy required for the boiler because it is being used. Uh, it is it, we are using the uh, distillate stream. But the only thing that you need to be concerned is your condenser as well as your compressor. Um, I actually uh, have compiled all of the result in the slides, and I will explain uh, my finding. Uh, not in here, uh, but in the slide. So let's go back to our slide, and we will do where, and we will finish up our our session. So guys, uh, these are my simulation result, which I have compiled. And as you can see from the first table, um, for configuration A, I was able to get 99.6. Same goes with uh, configuration B. Uh, purity, 96.3 and then 96.2, uh, meeting the requirement of HD5, uh, grid uh, propane and polymer grid propane. And the production rate, 
a yearly production rate is 450,000. This one is slightly higher because we have to play around the split fraction. But if you want to be like super accurate, you can always uh, modify slightly the, the reflect ratio. It's not really a problem. And then the problem recovery, I get 99.3. And then this one also 99.3. So uh, configuration A and configuration B both satisfy the requirement of the simulation in terms of purity as well as recovery. Uh, now, if you look at the thermal and energy result, we can see that uh, configuration A requires a, a, cool, a cooling utility around 42 megawatt, and then reboiler uh, or hot utility requires 42.18 megawatt. Uh, uh, for configuration B, you can see that uh, the the condenser, okay, as opposed to having 42.67 uh, megawatt uh, a cooling duty, it only requires 7.42 megawatt of cooling duty because majority of the propylene are already condensed. But of course, we have additional, we need to add additional, uh, I'll say, energy uh, in the form of work because we use a compressor. So, uh, so in summary, uh, the design for configuration A and configuration B both meet the objective. Uh, duty for configuration B are significantly smaller than configuration A, so that indicates an energy saving. But uh, to just simply mention that they are better than configuration A, I think it's a bit, it's a bit, I would say crude, if you know what I mean. Because I think it's better for us to uh, translate them into operating costs because uh, the electricity costs are probably, probably a lot, uh, uh, Per, let's say per kilowatt hours, right? The electricity cost will be a lot, will be higher compared to uh, the energy, the uh, the cooling, uh, the the uh, low pressure steam, or in this case, a uh, cooling water, uh, cooling water uh, price per per kg, for example. Uh, that's that's one thing. Okay, another thing is um, how it translate into capital cost is also something that you need to consider as well because we know that compressor is quite expensive so uh yeah they, 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 yeah you save in terms of like operating costs but you also have to consider capital costs as well in terms of like energy saving okay from uh, just by looking at the numbers in terms of energy saving yes i can safely say that the configuration b are more energy efficient but then again uh, i don't want to simply say that they they you know they they are the best because we need to i think it's better for you to represent better for me to represent the numbers in terms of in terms of operating uh, yearly operating costs Okay, um, I think that will be all for me. Um, if you like the videos, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to my channel. And if you have anything that you want to say, do you want to highlight, or there are something that I mentioned in the videos that are incorrect, uh, please write down in the comment section. And I will see you guys again in the next video. All right, bye-bye.